John has a testimony. Glory to God. <laughs> this is amazing, guys. Noir, come here. Come here, brother. This is the coolest thing in the world. You know, when God prepares our hearts for a divine appointment, he brings people together for his purpose and for his deliverance. So yesterday, I go, I work really hard. I'm really hungry, so I stop off at a Thai restaurant. And I sit down to start eating. And this beautiful man and his wife walk in, sit down, and they begin to pray in Arabic. And I hear Jesus' name. I'm like, oh, that's Kurdish. I know that. I know that language. And he sees my shirt, and I have Hebrews 4.12, which is the sword of the Spirit, right? I've got my Men of Valor shirt on. And he sees it. And he goes, I like your shirt. I said, thank you. I know you're a man of God. You, I saw you praying. He's like, yes. And we start talking. And I said, shalom aleichem. And he said, aleichem shalom. <laughs> and he goes, I'm from Iraq. And this is the coolest thing. He goes, I'm from Iraq. And, and my wife and I are, are here. And I said, are you Yazidi? You, you were Yazidi. He's like, how did you know? I said, I know the Yazidi people. I, I've studied every culture, every language. I've studied the different religions throughout the world, the occult religions. And he begins to share with me. I've been crying out to God for somebody to come into my life to show me how to get set free. This is the coolest thing, guys. So, Brother John... You know, I, we get a hold of him this afternoon, and he's from South Africa, but he, he works in Iraq as a medic every six weeks. And so I asked Brother John to be here, and I invited Noir and his wife to come, and God is setting them free. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <clears throat> so we usually don't go to that buffet place, you know. <clears throat> yeah. So... I have to beg my wife to go with me. I said, let's just go. I know you don't like it, but just come with me this time. Well, we walk in there, and I saw him. I was so hungry. I got so full up. I couldn't eat anything. The Spirit of God was in that place. And I knew there was something in him that I have to grab. I don't know what it was, but there was a spirit on my brother over here that I couldn't let him go. So we approached. We changed phone number. He invited me here. My wife is here. She's somewhere in the back. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm from Iraq, and um, thank you. America is a, such a blessed country. Where I come from, and the religion and the witchcraft, I'm the only one that left out of it. I got families. They will die and never get out of it. You can't just up and leave. They'll kill you. You'll, there's so much behind it. Yeah. They know who Jesus is. They know all about Jesus. But they don't have the opportunity I have. And you guys have to say, I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to surrender. So I feel like there is a call in my life. I'm going to learn as much as I can from my brothers right here. And one day, I want to go back to Iraq and share with the people. Open their eyes and let them see the truth. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> How, how, how am I going to do it? I don't know. But I know God is going to help me to do it. That's right. So, That's right. again, my name is Nawar. It's a pleasure meeting each and every one of you. Uh, before you leave tonight, let me shake your hand again. And thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening. The results, uh, the results would have been better had he been at Golden Corral. But, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and nobody's perfect. Uh, all right. Welcome to the Deliverance Center tonight. Uh, the seminar is next Friday. It's on the strange world of familiar spirits. And uh, please remember, I'm on the radio every morning and afternoon here in the Valley. And uh, I'm also out in the West Valley on FM radio at 7 in the morning and then in the middle of the night. Uh, the radio programs are always accessible on the Internet on SoundCloud.com slash Hardcore dash Christianity. Uh, if you switch over to Good Search from Google, they'll uh, donate to us when you surf the web. You just put in our uh, ministry name. We have four YouTube teaching channels. The first one, the Deliverance Training Channel, is for people that are interested in going into the healing and deliverance ministry. 
just go through those sessions on that channel and then uh, you'll save yourself a lot of time and energy and mistakes that I made over the years. All right. And uh, tonight's teaching is on our YouTube channel. Thursday night is on uh, our live stream station. Livestream.com slash H-O-H-A-Z. If you know somebody that needs to be delivered, apparently you do. You've got five people in your family with demons. <laughs> <laughs> According to Vivian's word of knowledge. Uh, <laughs> And uh, since most of you used to be clubbers, uh, you know, this, <laughs> according to Vivian, according to Vivian, it's got nothing to do with me. If they won't come for deliverance, which apparently the, your five relatives won't, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com, and I'll send you one of these two lists so they can uh, go through their step-by-step -step deliverance. YouTubers, don't forget about your terror cells. You're supposed to be setting those up in your churches. This week, we got an incredible testimony of a terror cell booming in, what was the name of that state? New York. In New York. Some, some church in New York. She's booming in her church. Good. Set up a terror cell. Picking off the sick people, picking off the people that need deliverance. You go in there and you do it kind of on the sly, sub rosa style. You slowly start picking them off, right. gently. It'll, God will bless you. It'll work. I did it when I was at the last church I was at. Thank you for your donations. Uh, as Vivian would say, the offering things are on the <laughs> doors. Those, <laughs> those are our anointed offering boxes, but now they're things. They're right there on your way out. Thank you. You can donate on the website if you'd like to. Thank you for your help. Don't forget the uh, women's conference, which is what Vivian was supposed to announce. <laughs> Since she got me involved in that. Thanks, dear. I'll be out in Oceanside next month. Cool. I'll see you there. Oh, will I see you there? We're Vivian, are you going? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've been dropped in a meat grinder. That's, that's, yeah, it's starting to add up now. Yeah, and discernment. Discernment kicking in. That's why they call me lucky. Anyway, skip that. I want to talk to you tonight uh, a little on the hodgepodge. Okay? I just want to have a little chit chat with you. And you talk back to me, I'll talk back to you. This week, I get hundreds of emails uh, every week. It takes me an hour to two hours a day to go through all of them. Uh, people are sending me emails from everywhere, practically. Uh, deliverance, healing, uh, questions, uh, questions about the videos, different things. Uh, I send those healing lists out uh, every single day, you know, seven days a week. It's a little lighter on the weekends, but not much. And Everybody asks me every conceivable kind of question, literally. Uh, this week I got uh, a lot of interesting questions about oral sex. Remember, that's, that's, what, that's why they call me lucky. <laughs> I had uh, a long dissertation about oral sex with a family. All right? Another lady contacted me this week. Uh, Facebook and uh, she had been watching my YouTube videos and she had watched the Kundalini Spirits video. Anybody here has ever ever seen that one? Yes. And then she had also watched Can Christians Have Demons video. That's a that's a short video and it uh, gives you the basic information, the nuts and bolts of exactly how it works. How can a Christian not be possessed but be infected with the spirit how does that work and then I go through the whole thing I got all the scriptures there I got the graphics there it shows you exactly how it happens because how Christians have spirits is probably the most confusing thing about the whole deliverance issue probably that that's the number one hurdle I, I face trying to get over that hump 
with people to get them to see that spirits can infect somebody's body but not possess a person and if you are infected with the spirit you're not a bad person and if you do have spirits God loves you exactly the same he loves you the same as if you were possessed by demons or if you were a wonderful woman or man of God he loves you the same so getting over that hurdle is really hard and as you can imagine this is a very difficult ministry and a very frustrating one. And if you let the frustrations get to you, you'll, you'll crack. And most people don't stay in the deliverance ministry for very long. They are in it for a while, then they get out. Too much pressure. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, a woman contacts me in a panic and she went to a prophetic service in California and a famous minister was there uh, who had wonderful gift of healing, really good guy, started out as a street preacher, has this incredible anointing. And then at the, at the end of the service, they decided to uh, have, a, have a prayer tunnel. And uh, prayer tunnels are where uh, a bunch of people stand on this side and a bunch of people stand on that side and then the person enters the tunnel there and then you come down through the center and everybody uh, imparts blessings to you they download anointings they uh, transfer giftings they uh, set you up to for trips to heaven and so on and uh, I've warned thousands of people about not doing that over the years because it's extremely dangerous. Yes. Uh, spirits can transfer from an infected person to another person and when Paul told Timothy don't let lay hands on any man suddenly keep yourself pure uh, he meant it. Well uh, this woman had already watched the Kundalini video seminar and she, her conscience was telling her not to go in the prayer tunnel this is a there were several hundred people there and uh, her friends all good people uh, told her listen no that's just the devil telling you not to come through and get your blessing so her friends put the social pressure on her and she she gave in so she goes through the thing and halfway through it her hands are buzzing and she gets through the other end and now she's infected and the spirits had uh, a legal right to do that they had God's permission and her permission because you have free will and if you choose to sin then the demons have God's permission to kick your face in because you chose to do that. The, the uh, scriptures, <coughs> testing one, two. The scriptures do not give you blanket coverage like Allstate. Jesus said, Father has good hands. And he says, once you're in Father's hands, you can never be taken out of there. He didn't say you couldn't jump out. No. She didn't put on the whole armor of God. She disobeyed God. She went, uh, no, sir. No, oh, no, she's a good Christian. She's a good person. She went through. She reads the word of God. She's a good Christian. She's a, she's a practicing Christian. But at that moment, she disobeyed, like all other Christians. 
And she opened a door and went through that line and got nailed. It can happen to anybody. Check it out. Peter is hanging around with a bunch of Messianic Jews. Party on, dude. He's hanging around with Gentile Christians. That's cool. When the Gentile Christians showed up, Peter was double-minded. Remember the story? Yeah. Now, uh, he's a practicing Christian, sir. Amen. And no, sir, that's a different incident. Uh, he, Peter was a practicing Christian. I'm not going to get any argument on that one. We could get some arguments on the Pope thing, but not on the other one. Peter screwed up. Paul rebuked him in front of the whole group. Okay? What had happened there? Peter had gone back in that one incident to his own old self where fear used to dominate him. And a spirit of fear, just for that one minute, got him off his game. It can happen to all of us, any of us. No Christian is immune to making mistakes and screwing up. Okay? There are no perfect Christians. Okay? Now, the guys on TV th think they're perfect, and they've put a good front up, but behind the scenes, and many of them have come to me for counseling, I know what goes on with that system. Okay? It's very, you would be shocked to know what goes on on TV ministers. These people, for whatever moment it is, make a mistake and they get caught. It's happened to me numerous times over the years when missionaries come to see me for counseling. They went over to Uganda or wherever it was. They go into a shrine. They go into some place they shouldn't be in. They think they're covered. Something happens. Something gets in. The same thing happens on the Jerusalem trips. Yeah? It's so bad in the secular counseling field and psychology, they call it the Jerusalem Syndrome. People go over to Jerusalem, and they come back with mental and emotional illnesses. That's the secular world. But what's happening is, weak, carnal Christians want to go over and get baptized in the Jordan River. Can't wait to do it. Oh, it's so nice. So they join a group. They pay $4,000. They get a round-trip thing. They get uh, X amount of meals, and then they get lodging. They go over there. They think they're covered. They're, they go to Calvary Chapel. They go to the Methodist Church. They go, I'm a Christian. Yeah, it's all good. And it's not all good. They come back. You sleep in a hotel in, in Palestine, in, in a hotel. You have no idea who's been in that hotel. You wouldn't believe the people who were in that hotel before you were there. Jerusalem's the most demon-infected city on the planet. Everything is in Jerusalem. The Orthodox Church is there. Catholics are there. Muslims are there. Everybody's there. And half of them hate each other. <clears throat> yeah. you, you don't get blanket coverage as a born-again, spirit-filled Christian. Amen. He said it. If you don't put on the whole armor of God, and you leave part of it off, you're open for a fiery dart getting in. I think it was a week or so ago, a lady came to see me who had been in 
dozens of kundalini church settings over the years. And she had gone through fire tunnels. She had been prayed for by people at the altar, this and that and that and this. She went to one service one time, and a day or so later, she woke up in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the Holy Spirit was blessing her from the waist up, and she, was, she felt like she was on fire. And she felt tingling and electricity in her arms and her hands. It woke her up, middle of the night. And it kept going on, and she couldn't get back to sleep, and it wouldn't stop. And she thought it was God. So she said, stop! And it stopped. And, you know, the look on her face was, uh, you know, a little stunned when I had to explain to her that that was not the Holy Ghost. That was a familiar spirit. We're going over that seminar next week. And these familiar spirits, you can, you can track them. If the manifestation in the person is out of control, and it runs on its own. Because the Bible says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So if God gives you a gift, that gift is under your control and your authority. That's what a gift is. If you give somebody a gift and then you maintain control of it and you keep it, that's not a gift. You're just leasing it or something subcontracting or whatever, that's not a gift. If you give somebody a gift, it's yours. But it's also yours to handle appropriately and responsibly. So if you have a great faith healing gift and you're on TV and you're using that gift to rake money in and clean people out of cash, you're misusing your gift but when God gives you a gift, he won't take it back. So since he won't take it back, the person then is responsible for that gift for the rest of their lives. Right? So when you have a gift from God and you can't control it, that's a red flag that's a familiar spirit faking you out. If it's out of control. How are they tricking us? They're tricking us because people want divine things. It's built into us. You know, most people have that. They want, they want something miraculous. And the demons know that, so they try to give it to you. And they want to control you through that ignorance. It's a trick. happens all the time. You run into somebody and you have an instantaneous attraction to that person. And it feels like you've known them for years. Oh, you're, you only know them two days and you're already in love. And oh, it was love at first sight. Marrying someone because you love them is not grounds to marry them. Just because you love someone doesn't mean you should marry them. You're not supposed to marry someone unless the good Lord picks that person out for you and gives you the green light. But the devil likes to give you the green banana. <laughs> 
if it's love at first sight, that's usually it's usually not going to work. Well, that's how you bring an evening to a downer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this list I send out uh, has helped so many people, it's hard, it's hard to believe. I put it together based on years of experience. So I send this list out to someone to help them and see them delivered because they're usually in another state or they're in another country so I can't see them personally and so I send the list out here's what it says hi see I like to start it out with a big anointing boom God loves you dearly and wants you well your condition is serious and prayer and Bible study alone will not work okay? Now, if you say that at the mega church, I'm going to get thrown out. But anybody with half a brain is going to keep listening to me because they've been reading the Bible and they've been praying and they're still jacked up. <laughs> this list has healed hundreds, and it has. Treat it like a college course. Okay. Okay, back to the list. Back to the list. He's fine. He's okay. I see that all the time. He can't grasp it. Now, this list has healed hundreds. Treat it like a college course. What do I mean by that? It's not a casual read. Take it slow and sure, one step at a time. Go to the website and read about all the testimonies of people who have done the list. Hit the testimonial button. And on the website, I got racks of pages of people sending in testimonies of being healed and delivered. So I put that in there because I was trying to give them some initial encouragement. Go to a Facebook site and look at the blessings page and read about all the miracles people received following the list. <clears throat> On the blessings page on the Facebook, I put in some of the miracles that have happened to me while I've been counseling. That's only the tip of the iceberg. It doesn't include all the he healings Kelly's had, Vivian, Karina, John, all these other people. I just put some of mine on there, you know, trying to give people some hope. That's what they really want. Okay? The list will allow you to weaken the demonic strongholds in your life and cast them out forever. Okay? Why did I put that in there? Because Christians want a light switch fix and they want to sin for 20 years and just come in and get it fixed and be done with it. And it doesn't work like that. The forgiveness part does work like that. You can be forgiven for a lifetime of sinning in just a few moments. A billion sins can be wiped out by the blood. That's how powerful it is. But what can't be fixed in an instance is A, the demons in your body, B, your thinking pattern, C, your culture, D, your family structure. All these things are still in place after you get saved and born again and, and come for help. Some things you can't instantly fix. To remove sin and sickness, curses and spirits, you must first weaken them. Why did I put that in there? Because you can't get rid of a sin or a demon that you're feeding. 
you would think that would be common spiritual sense. It isn't. Believe it or not, that's a huge hurdle there. You can't get the devil out of your house if you're making his bed and bringing him breakfast every morning. He'll come back. Okay. You need to reverse field on him, and when he comes back, plant this thing right up this area. Boom! If you do that, he will learn not to come back to that area. The devil, unlike Christians, isn't stupid. He doesn't do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result if it's not working. They don't do that. Christians do that. This will break their hold and their power. Once they're weakened, they're easy to remove. They are easy to remove. Spirits were beaten at Calvary and crushed in the resurrection. The kingdom of darkness was smashed. Now the devil runs the world only by permission, not by his own authority. He doesn't have authority to run the planet unless he's given permission. You must perform this list with everything you have. What am I saying there? I'm trying to explain to the person who's looking for a light switch fix that you have to put some effort into it. See? Becoming a disciple of Christ is a very rare thing. Only a very small percentage of Christians become disciples. And there's a reason for that. It requires a four-letter word. And it's much worse than the F word, which <laughs> rhymes with cluck. It's work. That's worse than cluck. That is kryptonite to Superman, to a Christian. You're going to have to do some work. It's like they've seen a ghost. They start trembling. Like they've got kundalini. They get a twitch. Did you say I don't... Real? From the time you started sinning until the time you come for help could be decades. Right? I've seen it many times. It took you decades to screw your life up and give the devil... Your life, you handed it to him and it took you decades to do it. You're going to come and get one prayer and one deliverance and now you're a disciple of Christ? Dude, friend, listen to me. It's not going to happen. is isn't going to happen. You have to put in some effort. So I put there you know, you have to fight for your life. Because as Vivian says, it takes a lot of work to pick up demons and go clubbing. And do, you put a lot of effort into sin, don't you? Yeah, you, it takes work to develop solid sinning. And you can't just pick up powerful demons casually. Man, you got to get out there and sin your face off to pick up these monsters. You can't just casually sin and pick up a bunch of demons. It's not going to happen. Okay, your grandmother said damn a couple times and yelled at somebody once or twice. But basically, she was a loving, kind person who baked cookies. Okay, grandmother is not loaded with pterodactyl spirits from the third quadrant of the Jurassic period. She doesn't have a truckload of demons. You picked up spirits because you worked to get them. You were a drug addict. You, you trashed your parents. You slept with everything that moved. You, you are a whore. You, you did all these ugly things. You got to work 
to get demons. You think these ISIS guys just woke up one morning, bam, demon possessed. No, nah, that was centuries of satanic involvement with Islam and Zoroastrianism and all these satanic things. These people are loaded with murder spirits you can't believe. They don't grow up, get that in 24 hours. You don't go to demon school and say, I need to get jacked up really bad quickly. It doesn't work like that. You need time. Energy, effort, work at it, get out there, sin like crazy. Did you pick up lust demons that are driving you nuts now and you're sleeping in bed at night and they come in and they fondle you and they hover over you? No, you had to get out there and sleep with some people. Come on now, get going. Pour yourself out, threesomes, one night stands, crank it. You don't just wake up and look at a playboy as a, a seven-year-old kid and suddenly you've got monstrous lust demons dragging you through the house. That's not going to happen. You have to work to go to hell. Put some effort in it. Well, when you just decide that you want to be healed and God decided he wanted to heal you before, long before you wanted to be healed, he's ready to go. The problem is never on that end. It's always on this end. I'm always a problem. There's never a problem there. You must fight back because you fought for the devil for so long. What I'm doing right now is just having a chit chat with you. The topics I'm covering here you would never hear in another church. In fact, that poor guy sitting over there heard it here. He bolted, yelled at me and bolted out the door. He was so stunned he couldn't believe it. But actually, this is spiritual common sense. And God went over it numerous times. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if you sow more into sin, you reap bigger, nastier demons. If you sow more into the Holy Ghost, you reap greater anointing and blessings. It's third grade. <laughs> Demons get into the person in layers, so to speak. Okay? And I've taught on this a thousand times. I start with childhood. It starts in childhood. It may start in the womb. The spirits start stacking in there. Okay? How do they get in there? I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know how somebody could have a legion of spirits. I don't understand that stuff exactly, so I just take it by faith because the Bible says that, and that's, that's, that's what I believe because I know it's true. But they get in in layers, so to speak, and they stack in there. And when someone comes here and they start to go through deliverance, a real danger crops up because... Every time a Christian gets a victory, the devil is setting you up at that moment to counterattack right. your win. Right. You know, he hates losing, but if you use your faith, he has to lose. He knows it. But he is planning behind his defeat for a counterattack. So what he does is he comes in and he makes you feel like you got a bigger victory than you actually did, and he starts complimenting you. You're killing it. Your anointing's fantastic. You can preach a tr bark off a tree, boy. You're awesome. And he'll send you people to tell you, you know, you're, you look so much better than... What happened to you? Well, I went through delivery. Oh, I feel so much better. Oh, man, now I'm really scared. Because they get in kind of in layers, and when you get these layers out here, you're feeling better. So these that are left want to go dormant, and then later on get those back in. They'll launch a counterattack later, 
and they'll bring you a trial or a tribulation or something like that to piss you off or anger you or hurt you or discourage you, and then they'll start reloading the layers if you fail. It, it's how it works. So I'm, I'm trying to warn them here. You just must just start removing the layers. It's a, it's a process. You know? And everybody gets delivered at a different rate and at different levels and different speeds. You know? Based on their own free will and their own personal motivation and their ability to receive truth. Everybody's different. You know, that's why we've all got different fingerprints. We're all different persons. We all have different spirit mans. We all learn and grow at a different rate. All that's covered by God's love and his patience. He knows who you are. He knows how fast you can grow. He stays with you no matter what, even when you fail. It's not a problem. But it can't be done in one instance. And what's the big obstacle? Well, it's a legitimate one. The devil beats the person half to death for these many years, and bang, now they come here, or they come to you for prayer. That's good. God's trying to save them from down here. So, beating, 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 beating you here. That's good. But by the time the person gets down to here, they have this sense of hopelessness, futility, and exhaustion. They're just pooped, you know. Drugs, rehab, relapse, drugs, rehab, relapse. Now they come here. This person is, in their soul, worn out. So that person is going to need extra love, extra encouragement, and... God's already ready to give them extra grace. As Paul said, you get more grace, to use his term. But that incident where they're exhausted could, could be destructive because an exhausted person, as Vince Lombardi said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. An exhausted person won't fight back. They're too pooped. Conversely, the beat-down person may re come to you here, and they're not emotionally exhausted. They just have run out of faith because they ran into too many word-of-faith blabbers. And the word-of-faith blabbing ruins people's lives. Here's what you do. Just speak to your mountain. and that, So they're doing it. I speak to my addiction. I speak to the... You can't speak to that when the root problem is that. So that speak to thing doesn't work. I'm speaking to my checkbook. <laughs> Why don't you just look? If you got a lot of checks in there, you can't be out of money. Okay, you can't speak to your bank account. And the Holy Ghost is not an ATM. It doesn't work like that. And that's what I thought. <laughs> exactly. It's a process, and you have to be patient and diligent as you go to your healing. Okay? Because if you don't give up, you're 100% guaranteed to get healed. Period. Uh, you do not get into this condition overnight, and you won't get out of it overnight. I'm trying to be spiritually practical with people. If I was trying to hose them, I would give them a bunch of word of faith and encouraging Christian gobbledygook. I would pump them up, okay, like they do at Hillsong. 
get everybody jacked and pumped, okay? That doesn't work because after you're jacked and pumped at Hillsong, you head out to the car and there's your insane wife and your cracked up kids. <laughs> Hillsong don't want them. <laughs> They're leaving them with you. Do you understand? Is this plain enough? Yes. You've got to do specifically what God tells you to do, and you can't hype your way around it. See, you people have no idea how lucky you are I'm here, because <laughs> 10 years ago, I, I, I said, hey, what kind of a ministry am I going to get into? Lord, I'm, I'm getting out of counseling. And I was thinking about, you know, while I was watching TV, I saw Joel Osteen up there. I said, man, I, I can kill Joel Osteen. I'm a lot funnier here. <laughs> then I saw these other guys up there ranting and raving and pumping. Everybody. I said, I can do that. That's fine. I couldn't do it. Why? I'm going to mention something that very few Christians have that's going to shock you. It's called integrity. You'd be shocked and amazed at how many Christians do not have that. You would be stunned to know that. Back to the list. When all the layers of wounds and spirits are removed, you will be cured. The real you will come out. You will be able to find your destiny in Christ, which we went over last week, is what really people really want. They want to know, why was I put on this earth and what am I supposed to be doing? That's really basically what people really want to know, down deep. Now, here are a few tips, I said, that will speed up this process for you. It must be done with sincerity, precision, and desperation. Now, like Vivian was saying, hey, when you were serving Satan, you were aggressive, you worked hard at it, you, you went after it hard. I did. You know, I sacrificed to get the happy hour. Uh, you know, you got to, man, you got to do stuff to sin. You say stuff to somebody to get them in bed. You pay for stuff after you get them in bed. Whoa, does that cost a lot of money? Oh, that can, I'm not going into that's another Bible study. Number one, so I take the person through steps to your miracle, and this will work with anybody, witches, warlocks, addicts, doesn't matter who it is. This is what Teen Challenge should be using here. I used to be a counselor at Teen Challenge. They're the best in the business, but they don't have deliverance over there. So if you don't get the addiction demons out, these poor guys are struggling when they're let out. Check it out. I do the one and two, the two most important ones, I do first. Hoping I could get one of these in. Make a list, a numbered list, of all the people in your past. Who hurt you? I don't mean casually. I mean, you know when somebody, somebody hurt you. People generally know what that term means. Significantly. Look up this verse, Matthew 5.44, and pray that verse over each of those people on that list exactly as the verse is written. And it, it caves in on me right here. I get the emails coming back, handfuls of them. Uh, I already forgave everybody. It didn't say to forgive them. Okay? Forgiving people doesn't work if you still have ought for that person. You can't forgive someone you still have ought, the Greek word is itis, it means to have 
some kind of an unpleasant, yucky feeling about them. You get the creeps when they're around. You ever had that? Creeps? Okay. If you're getting the creeps about somebody, and it's usually an inner circle person, parents, wives, exes, husbands, kids, it's usually somebody who has an emotional hook in you or had one. So in your past, had a hook in you. So they say, well, it's not working. I forgave everybody. I already did that. Whoa. I didn't ask you to. We're not forgiving them. That's a different subject. They make that, the devil tells them to make that leap. These are the things the demons are telling them while they're reading this. I'm telling you now what they tell them. Oh, you already forgave everybody. Skip that one. Oh, I'm dead in the water now. You pray over each person until that ought is gone. You must not only forgive them, but you must read the ought in your soul. Your soul is where your emotions come out of. For them. Okay? You can't forgive your husband, your ex-husband, your wife, your ex-wife, if you still think they suck. You can't forgive your abuser if they still make you sick. Now, what are you saying, Mike? Oh, I know what you're saying. We're supposed to approve of what they... Okay. You don't approve of anyone's sin, including your own. This is God telling you, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? If your answer is yes, then you'll do what he told you to do, which was... Release this ought and pray over them just like that verse tells you to do. Love your enemies. Okay? A child molester is your enemy. To say the least. Now, you can see why deliverance doesn't work. You go to the Orthodox Church, you go to the Catholic Church, you say, I need to go through deliverance. I got demons. Okay, well, they say, well, wait a minute. We don't have a certified exorcist in this parish, so you've got to go to XY. So you go over there. And then they, you fill out the forms, they check you out to see if you qualify for an exorcism. Okay? So I'm just telling you how the system works. Then if you do qualify for an exorcism, they take you through their process, which, which includes a lot of prayers and a lot of rituals and so, readings and so on. And some of the demons come out, but the problem is the controllers, the 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 stronger spirits in the person don't come out. And so the person has to keep coming back for repeat exorcisms. And the reason they don't come out is because they don't do this list. Unforgiveness and ought and having bad feelings about people that screwed you over in the past is a stronghold in your soul the spirits will hang on to like a grip. So while you're yelling at the demon and you're moving your hands, putting Bibles on them, hitting them with crosses, dipping them in stuff, pouring stuff on them, while you're doing that, the demon's not happy with it. He doesn't like it, but he's got a grip in there and he won't let go. I just did a radio show on that famous movie that just came out, a documentary about that, uh, Father Amora. And that poor gal went through nine exorcisms and never got delivered. And the guy that produced the uh, exorcist movie did that documentary, and he saw that thing. He was horrified at all the pain that woman went through. So the point I'm trying to make is 
th there isn't a deliverance method to use. Okay, now here's our method. Click, click, click. Everybody kind of uses different methodologies, but the point is you have to get that handle out of that spirit's hand. He, that grip he's got in there has to be broken. If the grip's not broken, you, we can't get them out. You can't get them out. It's so easy for the devil to beat us. Somebody you loved in your past stole something from you. You trusted them. You loved them. Family member, best friend, something like that. And that person stole something from you. They took your husband. They took some money. They took, didn't pay back a loan. Whatever they did, they screwed you over. That really hurts if it's, if it's an Allstate or a corporation or something like that, you're thinking, well, insurance companies, they always screw you over. I ain't, you're not personally involved with a corporation. When somebody personally that you care about and you love drives a stake right into your heart, that really hurts. And that emotional pain develops into ought. Okay? So if you still have that feeling come up in certain circumstances, you know that's ought. You can feel it in here. It's ought. Like that guy there that ran out. He's got a little ought against me right now. I have none toward him because that was mild for what I usually get. <laughs> I'm usually ducking it. Come on, Saka. Come on, Saka. No, don't come on. That was light duty. Uh, verbal abuse is not abuse. That, that's nothing. That's not persecution. After a while, you see it as a compliment. But anyway, <laughs> when you really hurt somebody, you, you have ought, see? And it can come in the form of resentment. Or, as Paul said, uh, a bitter root. He described it as a tree with a root digging down. It actually goes into the soul, and they have these negative emotions about that person. Right? And it's usually a parent, an ex, somebody close to you who had a hook in you, a closeness with you, a bond, and who you trusted at one time. And when that's broken, that hurts more than the, the government screwing us over. Because we, we know the government's going to screw us over. It's just another thing. You know, I'm not emotionally tied in to Trump and Clinton. I did the, I'm not there. But your kids, your, your spouse, your parent, you're there. It, it's, part, it's part of you. And so, number one on the list is beyond important to getting healed. Resentments, bitterness, and I've had people tell me flat out, right to my face, Mike, I can't do it. I can't do it. I say, no, you can't do it. Listen, would you be willing to do it? Yeah, and as soon as they go, yeah, then I know that's a no. <clears throat> See, the, if you're willing to do it and you know you should do it, the Holy Ghost will step up for you and help you do it. See, he know we can't do any of this on our own. But if we're not willing to do it, free will issue, then we're stuck with the demons. We're stuck with the wounds. You got to die with it. There's nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. Hypnosis doesn't work. <laughs> you are going to love that person. 
you are going to love. Jeannie, you love Jeannie. You love, you love Jeannie. You will awake as I count to three. One, two, three. Do you love Jeannie? Who's Jeannie? What do you mean? You said, oops, Jean. Oh, okay, now he loves some gal named Jeannie who he doesn't know. But Jean on the lip. Make a number two. Okay. Make a literal numbered list of what? Now we're into self ought. Stuff you don't like about yourself. What what do people not like about themselves? Bad decisions from their past. Regrets. Uh, their their fat, skinny, ugly body. Their their looks. The different things. People don't. Sir, I wasn't going to say anything, but now that you mention it, now that you mention it, uh, Viv, can you get over here and pray for that guy? If you don't like yourself, it's just as sinful as you not liking another person to God. That's the way he looks at it. I'm telling you how he sees it. You may not see it that way, but he does. And if you have dysmorphia where you look at your body and go, oh my God, look at that piece of crap. I hate myself. I'm too this, I'm too that. You're nitpicking yourself, running yourself down. That is going to block your healing and your deliverance. Okay? Uh, chronic regrets. Write them down. I tell them, write them down. Why am I doing that? I know from my counseling career that if someone looks at something and sees it in addition to thinking about it and talking about it, it will make a greater impression on the person. So I try and get them to write it down so you can actually look at it. It's the same principle with memorizing Bible verses and different things. It works positively that way. Write the verse down, read it over, think about it, rephrase it, Put it in a context of some kind, and you can memorize the verse. But if I just repeat the verse to you, recite this verse. Jesus wept. What you, Jesus what? Okay, now he's struggling with one verse, and it has two words in it. Write the verse down, Jesus wept. And you'll more likely focus on it and remember it. Write it down. I regret marrying George. Okay? Listen, don't knock yourself for it. Everybody that met George regretted meeting him too. Okay? It's fine. It's fine. I regret taking that job. I regret moving to this city. I regret that. Put it down and look at your regrets, okay? You got to go through each one of them and repent over each one of them for God to bless you. If you forgive yourself, so to speak, for these two things, but you're still holding on to these two, that's the handle the devil will hold on to. Whatever's left is what he will hold on to. Next week, we'll be back to our normal Bible studies and so on. I just took one week off here to go through this. This is all I'm doing. I'm only going to do it once, okay? We're not doing this regularly. All right? Please don't, <laughs> please don't bail. Pray hard and release the ought. What is ought? It's the same thing. You can have ought for yourself just like you can have ought for other people. And it will block your healing, deliverance, destiny, whatever it is you're praying about, whatever it is you need. What do you need a miracle for? Healing, finances, whatever. It'll block it. It blocks it. Sir? Do you, do you deal with people that you don't know personally exactly the sense of same problem? Yes. Do you Oh, yeah, that's odd. Yeah, I call that commercial odd. Okay, that... <clears throat> Do you deal with that stuff the same, exactly the same way? 
Uh, exactly the same way? No. Uh, but, oh, I'm, is that all? <laughs> this guy's healthy. Listen, for most people, it's way more than that. Okay, way more. All right? So, and that's another thing. What he said is true. You, you hate Trump. You hate tr Clinton. That's going to block your anointing. Okay, Trump and Clinton are none of your business. That's Holy Ghost business. You can't change any of that anyway. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, pride demons. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Listen, uh, whatever you have ought for, as he said, government or a person, whatever it is, that stronghold has to be broken. Okay? Yes, sir. Well, that's right. Now, he said, he says something that needs a little clarification there. He said, if somebody has hate or love in their heart, then it comes out. That's basically what he was saying. That's not completely true. You can have both. You can love someone in the Lord out of your spirit, man, and then you have ought in your soul and have negativity for that person. Okay, so if this person comes by here and needs prayer, your spirit, man, with love moves toward that person. Ten minutes later, they show up and, ugh, they start saying something or doing something that triggers ought. Okay? The word he used there, heart, is cardia in the New Testament. It means your inner man. But it doesn't specifically say what part of your inner man. Your mind is also part of your inner man, your conscience. So you've got to figure out which it is. Does that make sense? So that's why all of us operate exactly the same way. We have, we have a spirit man. We have our spirit man loving people. And then 10 minutes later, this person comes along who is just grinding us. And this other sense comes out. And that comes out of the soul. Ma'am. Um, well, she she said uh, she said can somebody's can my ought uh, affect you physically is basically what she was saying. Okay, uh, yes, but we wouldn't use those terms. the The ought would be the negative feelings I would have for you, but my the the demons that I have uh, would manifest and. I could, in a way, like put a spell on you by speaking a word curse over you, okay? You stole some money from me. You stinking, filthy, sucking thief. You and my demons would then manifest and attack that person, and then his heart rate could go up or he could get sick or something like that. It depends on the spirits I have and my level of demonization. But it's not your ought that's attacking them. That's, that's the negativity in the soul. But that's kind of the foundation of it. You feel that in there about that person, and then it comes out in different ways. Yes, sir? You say, can you? Oh, no. You can't speak something into existence. It depends on... Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, he says, what he's saying is that your words can curse somebody or bless them. That's generally true. There's other exceptions. Uh, just because you say something doesn't mean it amounts to a hill of beans if you don't really believe it. A lot of people will blab stuff out that they don't really believe. Okay, or if you're a stage actor or you're a movie star, they are blabbing things out left and right. They don't even believe that. They're just memorizing a script. What he's talking about is you spiritually, 
in your soul cursing this person and you mean it and you have spirits that can carry that curse over there and in uh, many countries voodoo is the highest level of that ability you can actually put a curse of death on somebody and they have that kind of power that will carry that to the person again that's demon spirits carrying the curse to them see conversely it's the Holy Spirit if you truly mean it and you're praying for him you can speak a blessing over that person and into that person's life so it depends on on if you mean it or if you if you're just chattering or if you're really doing it from your inner man or your heart yes sir yes That's right. Yeah. Amen. You should be teaching, sir. Now, here it is. Don't stop until all the emotions of self-disgust, self-hate, and condemnation are gone. If you have bad feelings about yourself, it will... Block your recovery and your deliverance. Self-hatred is as bad as hating other people. There's no way to get out of it. So I send them this list, and the first two are the most important ones, so I put them first. Plus, it weeds them out quick. They quit. Uh, they see that first one. Oh, I need to find another deliverance person. <laughs> so I don't want somebody continually contacting me who's not going to do number one. Okay? Here's what they say. I did number one. This thing's not working. <laughs> and then I say, do you have any bad feelings about anybody in your past? And then they say, well, yeah. Such and such, so and so did this and that, and then I, I said, then I say to him, "You never did number one." And they're shocked to know, you're right, I didn't do number one. The spirits tell them they're killing this thing. They're telling them they're doing it. Is that making sense? Because they're they're afraid of it. They don't want to do it. The next email I get is, "Brother Mike, I started to do your list, and all hell broke loose in my life." I email him back. Great. If you weren't doing the right thing, they wouldn't be fighting back. They fear the list. That's why they attack you, to distract you from it with a trial or temptation. That means the list is from God. Go back and do it. I've had over a hundred of those emails. As soon as I started to do that list, this happened, that happened, this, that. It's a good sign. It means the person really tried to start doing it. If they just superficially read it, the spirits wouldn't do anything because they've already got them in the bag and they're going to keep them in the bag. But they're trying to get out the bag. Well, of course, they're going to counter counterattack. And they usually do it through sending some negative person into your life to hurt you. That's their trump card, other people. What? They're trying to distract you from the list, exactly. Then they send me an email back, and this is not working. I said, that's because you're not doing the list properly. Go back and look at it and see what you missed. I said, if you don't do this list, you are not going to get healed. This list is your only hope. If I get another email back on that one that says, who do you think you are? You don't have all the answers. I said... <laughs> I say to them, 
It's right in that verse. It's right in the verse. All these steps, I didn't sit down with a swami and a towel on my head, sniffing incense and come up with that list. I went through God's word. I spent years seeing people healed. I spent years fighting their strongholds. So I developed this thing through blood, sweat, and God's word. Yeah, right? So, you cannot blow smoke up people's nostrils and see them healed. It doesn't work. You can't hype it out of them. See, it won't work. See, there's a place for encouragement in the church. I'm 100% for it. But encouragement alone doesn't work. You've got to have practical steps to perform God's word and apply what you've learned and do what's right. What I just said is rat poison to most Christians. They don't want to hear that. And as you can imagine, I go weeks at a time without signing an autograph. <laughs> People are not excited to see me. Oh, T.G. Jakes is coming. They'll be lining up from here to New Jersey to get an autograph. Brother Mike's there. Run like hell. <laughs> Why? Jakes does a good job pumping you up and giving you a temporary respite of encouragement. And that's fine. He's doing a good job. He's a fantastic uh, pumper-upper. <laughs> but that's, that's only to give you a boost then to do what's Right. That's right. Yes. I'm not doing this again. I just chose one week to do it. Don't, don't turn on me. Yes. Now, did you hear what he said? That was a great statement. That's a condemnation issue. And it's very common. In fact, I dare say 90-something percent of everybody I work with has that issue. That is, this run-in-the-mill occurs. That issue only stays in the person's life when they have not renewed their mind on, the God, on God's Word. Here's how it works. The demons are retrofitting you. They are always looking back. As a person renews their mind, the Holy Ghost teaches them to look forward. To what he has for them see so if you come for deliverance one time that mental process that took decades for the demons to set up regretting regretting you don't get that overnight you got to work at that for decades that process can't be broken in 24 hours second thing he said I'm confronted with my carnage. That's true. All of us are in his shoes. I had so much crap in my life when I came to the Lord. It was unbelievable. I had a rack of friends, uh, superficial friends, lots of them, right? Everybody has those. No, they weren't real friends. They were just... Uh, people you 
had fun with, partied with, happy, different things. And when I first became a Christian, the demons hit me with the same thoughts they hit everybody else with. You really think you can make it? Look, what, look at your lifestyle here. How are you going to get rid of her? How are you going to stop hanging out with these? Where, what about all your friends? Where are you going to go? You're going to start going to church? What about this? All these things you have in your past, everybody has them. Everybody has them. What happened to me? The same thing happens to you. As you renew your mind on the Word of God, your old life starts to drift away and become difficult to see, almost like a fog. And your new life, the light of the glorious gospel that starts to shine through, and you start to get happiness, hope, fulfillment, destiny, progress, goals that are spiritual now, not my old life was totally carnal. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, money, all that. That's all carnal. You can't instantly become a disciple. It's not possible. Jesus worked with the 12 disciples for three or four years, and at the end of it, they were complete goofs. Now, would you then conclude Jesus was an incompetent teacher because they were idiots? Far from it. Far from it. They didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelling here. They did after the day of Pentecost, and they went from carnal, lukewarm, failing Christians to world changers. But they didn't change instantly, overnight, in their minds. The next problem you'll run into, as he said, no accountability. You leave here, you get a blessing from God or someplace, you go home and you're stuck with those people. <laughs> those people are not looking out for your best spiritual interests. Or if they are and you screw up, there's no accountability set up in that system for you to repent and change. So you get these bad spiritual habits developed in your family unit. And the person starts to live a yo-yo Christian life. Up today, down tomorrow. Doing great today spiritually. In the tank tomorrow. And so this happens to everybody who's in that environment. Yeah, I only, over, I only went over two things on the list and don't have time to do number three. Yeah. YouTubers, I'm talking to you tonight. I hope, you're lis I hope you're listening to me because when you send me that email and say, I did the list, I know you didn't do it. Even if you do a lot of the list, like that first incident lady I told you about, the Kundalini, she had already watched. She already knew that that was a mixed service and did it anyway. Peer pressure. Got her. Her friends said, hey, blah, blah, blah. So she got up and went through. Now she has to get that thing out of there. I'll just close with this then. As I told you before, Christianity is not a cakewalk. 
And if you're going to do something for God, it's going to set off some red flags in the spirit world and somebody's going to come looking for you. If you want to be a carnal, lukewarm, mega church Christian and just go through the routine every Sunday, no problemo. They're fine with that. And you can just keep going to church and keep going. They don't mind it. They go to church. Demons go to church. They're there every Sunday. I'm not making that up. They are there every Sunday. Okay. But if you really want to change and make a difference with your life, you're not going to be able to casually do it. You're going to face opposition. And you have to, as Jesus said, count the cost before you start on your road to your destiny. There's a cost and a price to be paid for what you're doing. And I don't mean a hardship cost. Those are tough too. I'm talking about real painful costs, like an apology. <laughs> Holy God. You mean I got to call? Whenever you see this physical movement, you know what? You ought to call them and talk. If you see that, it's kind of a doubling action. That's manifested ought. See? When you're counseling somebody, you're, you're a body language watcher. Okay? And somebody who's who's very expressive with their body language, like that guy, he got up. That's easy to spot. But the little subtleties, you know, really, you need to call your dad. As soon as that head went that way, the V move, I know I'm in trouble. So I got to press in a little closer on that one, gently. You know, and here's why you need to call your dad. Yeah, he did fondle you. Yeah, he raped your sister. I get that. That was wrong, 100%. I agree. God agrees. God agrees with you. It was, that was a sin. But your dad doesn't want to be healed. He doesn't want to find his destiny. He doesn't want to serve the Lord. You do. Correct? Yes, I do. Okay? So you, not your dad, you have to follow and hear the word of the Lord. Correct? Well, yes, you're right. Because your dad doesn't care about the word of the Lord. If he did, he'd have never put his hands in your pants. He'd have never touched your sister if he had any care for God's word. That would have never happened. But he doesn't. But you do, and so you have to make that call. And that one backfired on me two, a week and a half ago. Guy calls me back. Listen, I called my so and so and apologized to him, and I'm to and I told him I'm sorry. And then he went into a mea culpa and started confessing stuff. I said, "Dude, I didn't tell you to call up and confess stuff." He starts telling them stuff they didn't know. So now they hate him more. You are not required to confess your sins. If you're Catholic, hey, I'm, I apologize. You're not required to confess your sins to him. He doesn't need to know you had these deep, dark, sick, perverted thoughts 14 years ago. It's none of his business. You're calling to tell him, you know, I said some things I shouldn't have said. I did some things I shouldn't have said. And, you know, the Lord told me... Uh, you know, that wasn't right. And you know what? I shouldn't have said it. So I apologize. Okay? You wouldn't believe how hard that is. That's harder than facing a firing squad. I mean, that's tough. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I had to call my ex-wives. Had them all on speed dial. And... Um, <laughs> And 
did they do bad stuff to me? A hundred percent. I didn't. I wasn't calling for that. I don't need them to. I don't need that. I'm. I'm calling because I'm obeying God. And I shouldn't have treated you like that. I shouldn't have said that. And you think it's tough, huh? Yeah. You try calling your ex-wives. Yeah. Oh. Oh man, that phone shaking. <laughs> but you're praying. You're speaking in tongues. That phone's heading up to your ear. Uh, what was I doing there? I was doing number one. I was swallowing my own medicine. God said, do it. So I had to do it. Why? Because I wanted a blessing. This wasn't about them. It was about me. And, and I'll be honest with you, a couple of calls didn't go well. Okay? But that don't matter. It don't matter. I wanted God's forgiveness and approval. If they still think I stink, and that's fine, and I did stink. I'm not justified. That's not my problem. But had I called up and started confessing stuff they didn't know about, they'd have probably come after me with a gun. <laughs> what you're doing there, you're exacerbating a failed, useless situation. You don't do that. Don't start confessing your sins to everybody. It's none of their business. I know what you're thinking right now. This is not very interesting, but it is practical, and it is helpful, but not all that interesting. And again, I'm not presenting it like Vivian would. You got to call your brother and your sister. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm just talking to you like a counselor, and I'm telling you I'm hoping to appeal to your intellect. I'm hoping to gently give you the information and tell you that this is what God, and God will bless you, and he will anoint you if you will obey his word. Because obedience is the key to Blessings from God. Duh. All right. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll turn the lights out for prayer. Father God, I uh, just did this one time. I'm not going to do it again. I went over a couple of things about uh, all the emails I've been getting. And I was trying to help my YouTube friends and my friends here, here at the Deliverance Center. I know you love them. Lord, Tonight, there's some people here who haven't done one and two. They've partially done it, or they thought they did it, and there's still a little bit of ought there. And tonight, I want to ask you, I want to ask you for this prayer. I want, I want that removed. I, I want you to bless my brother, who the devil keeps throwing up his past. And I want you to give him the anointing to see that he is now to throw up the devil's future in his face. His future is bleak. His future is bleak. So when the devil reminds me of all my past failures, I remind him of next Friday at the Deliverance Center, all the people are going to get healed and delivered. Why don't you come by and take a look at it? I'm asking you right now, Lord, to bless any person in this room. Now, some people got up and they couldn't take this tonight. I get that. That's fine with me, and I understand. But there's some people here that have ought in their heart, in their soul. They've got negative feelings about somebody, or they have negative feelings about themselves, and that's going to ruin their spiritual life. It's going to ruin their anointing. It's going to ruin everything. And it's an ex-wife, an ex-husband, a current spouse, a parent. It's the kids who betrayed them. I mean, somebody stabbed them in the back and gave them pain and misery and sorrow. And they forgave them, but they still have ought. And tonight, that ought is going to be removed so the anointing and the blessings of the Holy Ghost can now start moving through their life. 
in the name of Jesus. And that's going to happen. Amen. All right. Bless you tonight. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your patience. I need to do that once. I'm not going to do that again. Okay? We have a regular Bible study next week at the seminar on familiar spirits. Okay, we'll get back to the scriptures and we'll hit that hard. Now, if you've got any ought in your heart, I want you to come down and see me right now. The bookstore is still open. I think Lori's in the bookstore right now. And uh, thank you for your donations. Please don't leave if you have some ought about yourself or somebody else. If you got ought about yourself or somebody else, I'm telling you, God is telling you, point blank range, your future blessings are being robbed and you are spiritually screwed if you don't get that ought out of there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's the word of God. Listen to me carefully. Thus saith the Lord, if you bring your gift to the altar and you f remember you have ought against someone that's these are the words of Christ not my words leave your gift at the altar don't sing your song don't don't donate any money don't go witnessing don't do this don't do that don't leave your gift at the altar try to fix it then come back then come back and offer your gift that's what Jesus said okay yeah I didn't like it either. It's not fun. I know that. I had to make them calls, and they, they weren't they weren't fun. Yeah, I was a little scared. Yes, I was a little hurt over it. Yeah, I was I was scared. I didn't know how that would go over, but God helped me get through it. He helped me make that call, and He can help you get through this. Okay? This ought thing, last thing, this ought thing usually starts in grade school. When a person leaves their family and starts to go to school, that is the most, one of the most traumatic moments of the child's life. They leave the family unit and they go to kindergarten or first grade. That is super traumatic and ought starts to develop through adversity from other students when you're young. And if you're not attractive, it gets worse. Kids are cruel. And the kid starts to have ought against other kids. And then when you go through puberty, and you start to get into relationships, real ought starts to develop. Real ought starts to develop when you start falling in love and you are betrayed. And that will destroy your spiritual future. And that's why Jesus said, leave your gift at the altar. Go back and try and fix it. He didn't say it had to be fixed. He didn't say they had to accept it. He's talking about you repenting of it. I did. I repented of it. I said, write down the ex-wives, write down your parents, write down whoever it is, and you pray Matthew 5.44 over that person. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And I did it sincerely. And God released me from them. I, I got healed. I get along with my ex-wives great. It's so good, I may start having an annual reunion. <laughs> I have no problem with them at all anymore. Nothing. Not a thing. It's a Holy Ghost miracle. What am I telling you? If you'll obey the Word of God, we're all the same. We all have to obey. Just repent of it right now. And just close your eyes. Now, come on, let's do it. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
I got a little ought here, what Brother Mike was talking about tonight, kind of kind of landed home. And I got ought from people making fun of me when I was young. Kids making fun of me. Relatives, parents. I've got negative feelings in my heart right now, and I'm going to repent of it right this second in the name of Jesus. I got the devil reminding me of my past failures and my regrets, and I'm going to repent of it right this second in the name of Jesus. Come on, speak it out. Just confess it. Father, forgive me for hating that person. Forgive me for having bad feelings about them. Forgive me for saying negative things about them. Forgive me for saying negative things about myself. Forgive me for what I've done, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me. Forgive me for going back into my sin, listening to demons, listening to negative people, listening to lies. Forgive me, Father. Right now, I'm asking you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for that person that hurt me right this second. And I bless them in the name of the Lord. I pray for them in Jesus' holy name. Lord, I ask you to bless them right now. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. I bless them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I repent over these negative things, feelings I have over myself. Negative thoughts about myself. Come out. Come out. Look over here. Come out right now. Come out right now. Keep coming. Come out right now. Come out. Go. Come out right now. I repent over bad feelings about myself. Come on. Let's do it. There he is. He's right in there. Get him out of there. Come out right now. Come out, devil. Come out of it right now, devil. Come out right now. Satan, I hate your guts for deceiving me and lying me. In the name of Jesus, every person here is a sinful Christian. A Christian who practices sin. I repent of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Sin, I command you to come out of me right now. Lies, I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out right now. There he is. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Come out. Go. Satan, ought. Come out right now. Ought against yourself. Come out right now. Hatred for myself. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. There it is. Keep yawning. Come out. Ought, I command you to come out in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. I said go. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Gift of hate. Manifest. I hate you, devil. I hate you, devil. What's wrong with you, honey? What's wrong with you? What you need? What you need from God? What do you need? Come out. Why are you down here? Why? Come out. Say it. Like last week. Say it. Why are you down here? A little bit of, um, Come on. my daughter just betrayed me. And, uh, What's your daughter's name? Felicia? Okay, here. Raise your hands. Please forgive me for having bad feelings about my daughter. She stabbed me in the back, right back here. She lied to me. I gave her benefits. I gave her my love. And my daughter betrayed me. She trashed what I did for her. She didn't appreciate it. She didn't honor me as her mother. And now there's a curse on her life. And I don't want my daughter cursed. I don't want my daughter first. Come out. So right now I'm going to repent of these feelings of ought right down in there. I'm going to repent of it and command that negativity to come out right now in the name of Jesus. I command that to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. You you know her? Yes, sir. You're her husband? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Does she have fear? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Put your hand. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. a girl. Now your husband's praying for you now. There's no reason to be afraid. In the name of Jesus, I command, I command this spirit of fear and shyness to come out of my wife in the name of the Lord. You get out of her right now. I command every ounce of ought to come out of her for her daughter and for other people she didn't tell Brother Mike about. There's other people in there. In the name of Jesus, I command it to go right now. Come out. 
Come out right now. Come out right now. Keep blowing. Come out right now. Every spirit and soul wound from her daughter in her soul right there has to come out right now. Come out. Keep yawning. Good. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Sin. Lust. Come out, Lord. Lord, we bind lust right now and anger. Anger from his parents. Come out right now. Come out. Frustration. Frustration and exhaustion. Come out. I command this spirit to come out of me now. Come out of me, devil. Right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Spirit of fear. Come out. Spirit of fear. Step up here. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Come out of there right now. Spirit of fear. Go. Go now. Spirit of fear. Go. Come out. There they go. Come out right now. Get your stuff out of there so your anointing will flow. What is it? And why do? What were you mad at him about? Well, there was infidelity because she made out with him and stuff. Oh, she was making out with him. Okay. Now, when you were young, were you promiscuous? Yeah. Lots of girls. Yeah. Okay. Did you know you can pick up spirits, transfer spirits, when you sleep with a girl? And then later on in life, it manifests in lust and anger and frustration, sometimes violence. They transfer in. Those got to come out. How do you get them out? Put your hand right there. Put that one right there. Breathe out of your mouth. I command every transfer spirit from my old life of adultery to come out of me right now. Satan, come out of me right now. Get out of there. Come out. Come out of my stomach. There it comes. There it comes. Go now. Come out, you pig. Come out of that body, you pig. Go. Get out of there right now. Come out, you. Get out. Every, every ugly woman I ever touched. Oral sex. Come out. Lust, come out. Come out. Get out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of me right now. Go now, I said. Go. Where's where is it? Where is that fire last week? Where is it? Close your eyes. Satan, come out of me right now. Come out right now, I said. Satan, come out right now, I said. Come out, I said. Stop ignoring me and come out. Say it. Come out. Satan, come out. Say it. Devil, come out of me. Say it. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Say it. By the authority of the word of God, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Cast that spirit of infirmity out of you. Cast that hatred for your wife or your husband out of you right now. You hate his guts. You hate her guts. That's killing you, friend. That means you're going down. Did you hear me? You're going down. Repent of it. Satan, come out right now. There he is. Come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of him, you sorcerer. Come out, you witch. Drugs. Come out. 
drugs come out. Hatred, violence come out. Come out of there. Right now, sorcery. Go in the name of the Son of God. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Get out. Come out quicker. Come out. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Come out of there, you witch. No witch is here tonight. Come out right now. Go. Come out, Satan. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Go now. Go now. Come on. Use your authority. Use your faith. Let's go. Use your faith. Let's go. Go all the way. All the way. Use your faith. Let's go. Ought. Disgust. I am disgusted with that person. I'm disgusted with myself. I command that spirit talking to me to come out. I command that spirit talking to me to come out of my head. I command you to come out of my head right now. Get out of my head. Come out right now. Body dysmorphia. Come on, ladies. Let me talk to you. 75% of body dysmorphia is women. 75% is women. Come on, ladies. In the name of Jesus, I do not hate my body anymore. I renounce that evil. I renounce it. Stop talking to me right now. Tell him. Stop talking. Get there out. you go. Get there out. you go. Good. Get out. Say it. Get out. There you go. Say it. Get out. Get out. Every single one of them. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man that ever touched my body tonight has to go. Every one of them, including that. Come out. That one. Come out right now. Get out of there. Body dysmorphia. Food demons. I bind your power. Food demons. Unclean spirits of food. You tell me to eat uh, to get comfort, comfortable. You tell me to eat for comfort. That is a sin. The Holy Ghost is your comfort or not. Food. Repent right now. Oh, what's the word of it? And you felt him go in. Think about it. No, 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 now that was the thing. And he's still in there. <laughs> See, they tricked you into trying to get rid of anxiety. Can't do it. It's a person. Your, your dad transferred a person into you. Do you hear me? You don't have anxiety. I guess I don't really understand. <laughs> That's right. That's why you came here. A person from your dad left your dad and entered you when you were afraid over your mother's well-being. A spirit entered your body and from that day on you started to develop anxiety and you still have it because you still have him how do you get rid of it then good it's not an it it's a person and you can't get rid of the anxiety until you get rid of the fear spirit causing it it's the same thing with a tumor. Uh, the doctor, MRI, oh, tumor right there. Surgery, suck it out. Tumor's gone. 
same thing. Only this is spiritual. He's in there. A person jumped in your body. A person. who's He's listening to me right now. And he doesn't want you to hear me because he knows what I'm doing. He knows I'm on his trail. Because he was able to stay in there all these years because of confusion. You have to cast him out. Say it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release my father's sin when he tried to kill himself and tried to kill my mother in front of me when I was only seven years old. I forgive my father and I release this ought for him for what he did to me as a child and what he done to my mom and other things he did that were also demonic. And I command my dad to leave my soul tonight I do not need a dad anymore. I have a heavenly father who would never hurt me in a million years. I do not need my dad anymore. I turn my dad over to the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, and I command this transfer spirit of fear to come out of my body right now. Come out of me right now. Come out of me now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of me right now. Come out now. Get out of me. Right now. Spirit of fear. I bind your power and I command you in the name of Jesus. Leave my body now. Leave my body now. Shyness. Cowardice. Spirit of Delia. Cowardice. Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, I said. Come out, I said. Hey, spirit of fear, you come out of my body right this second. Say it. Spirit of fear, come out of my body right now. There you go. Keep going and go. Keep going and go. Come out. Satan, I, I release my dad's evil spirits right now. I repent of being afraid. I repent of having fear thoughts. And I command this thing to come out of me. And I let my tears go. Come on, let your tears go, honey. There it is, right there. Good. There you go. Glory to God. There it goes. Come out. You child abuser, come out. You sex pervert, come out. Child abuse, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Come out of my wife. Come out of my wife right now. Go in the name of the Lord. Go. I had your guts get out of there. Here he comes. Come out. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out. Quick. Quick, come out of there. I hate you. Go in Jesus' mighty name. You just take command. Take command of the demons. That's what you do. Satan, I bind your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Lust, pornography, and drugs, I command you by the authority of the word of God to come out of my body right now. Go! Go! Spirits of overeating. Come out of me right now. Sin. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Wickedness. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. There he is. Here he comes. Come out. Get out of me right now. Go. Satan, loose your hold. I'm not asking. I'm telling you to do it. I'm telling you to do it. Come on. You cannot hate that person anymore. You've got to stop it. You cannot hate yourself anymore. Just repent of it. 
How do you do that? You do what I tell you. Jesus, in mighty name, I repent. I repent of hating myself. Get out. Get out of my body right now. Go, in Jesus' name. Go, Spirit. Come out. Come out right now. Church of Demons, I command you, come out. Kundalini Spirits, fire tunnels. Come out, in Jesus' holy name. Uncontrollable jerking from Kundalini. Ho! Come out! Ho, demons, come out! Fire tunnel spirits, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Come on, come on, ladies. Dysmorphia. You hate your body. You look in the mirror and you go, oh my God, I can't believe it. Repent of that. Father loves you no matter what you look like. He adores you no matter how, what you look like. He wants you no matter what you look like. Just repent of it. Do it now. Do it now. I repent of it right now in Jesus' holy name. Go. Right now, go. Right now, go. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce sorcery. I renounce Ouija boards. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce demons from Islam. I renounce Zoroastrianism. Go! Right now, go. Familiar spirits, go! Thus saith the Lord, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Get out of that body right now. And let the unrighteous forsake his thoughts, and let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy. Let them return unto our God, and he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon. Get out right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. He will abundantly pardon. You are staring at an incredible level of forgiveness. Just confess it and repent of it. You say, well, I can't repent. It's going to hurt. Take the pain. Just take it. Just repent of it. Just struggle through it. Just repent of it. For this Holy Ghost will help you. He will save you. He will stay with you. Just repent of it. Come on. You don't like somebody? Repent of it. You got odd against somebody at church? Do you know who most Christians have odd against? Most often? You know what it is? Church people. People at church. You wouldn't believe how bad that is. People have ought against other people at church. That's a trick of the devil. He told you to take an offense against that church person so your anointing would be destroyed. So you would fail. Don't you see it? Are you a spiritual fool? It was a trick. The devil sent you some idiotic church person to offend you and say something stupid. It was a setup. You fell into the trap. Now you're in trouble. They've gone off happily to offend other people. Now you're in bondage. Repent of it right now. Father God, I see that as a trick. I repent of that. I bless that person that hurt me and said things bad about me and didn't like my ministry and didn't like my ministry ideas, didn't accept my interpretation of the Bible. I repent of that stupidity right this second. And I command this thing to end. Right now, end. End it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I end this art right now. I quit now. I quit. Come on now. Turn in your notice to Satan right now. Do it. You're going to quit doing the same sins over and over. There you go. Good. Say it. Speak it out. I repent of doing the same sins over and over. I repent of it right now. It's a trick of the devil. It's the devil tricking me. I'm not falling for it anymore. Come on, friends. You've had enough. You've had enough. 
You're up to here with the devil. You're up to here with him. You have, you've had it. And you are going to fight back. You are going to make a list in your mind right now of all the people that hurt you. You're going to forgive every one of them. You're going to bless every one of them. You're going to call down God's favor on that person. Father, this person screwed me and stabbed me right in the back. I call down your favor upon them. Right now, I release it from my soul. I release them into your loving hands. I do it now. Thus saith the Lord. Now. Come out. Come out quicker. Quicker. Come out there, you snake. Come out right now. Keep coughing. There it is. Here it comes. Go. Come out, devils. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Here it comes. There it is. Come out right now. Come out of him. Come out. Every spirit. Come out of the man of God. Come out of him. Come out. You're not done. Hurry up. Spirit, come out of there right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. There he comes. Come out. Come out, spirit, right now. Get out of the stomach. There it comes. Go. Come out. Evil. Evil, come out of me. Evil, come out. Evil, I command you to come out. Evil, come out. Come out of me faster right now. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Get out. There you go. Get out. Get out now. Get out. Get out now. Get out of that body right now. You heard her. You heard her. She said, get out right now. Put your hand right there. Get them demons out of there. Get out right now. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Leave. Come out. Come out. Every ugly man that ever touched my body. Every man. Every man that touched me. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go now. Come out. Go now. Come on, fight harder. If you don't do anything, you're not going to get anything. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also weep. If you sit there looking around wondering why everybody else is getting delivered and you're not, I just told you. Thus saith the Lord. And Jesus sent them out two by two. And he gave them power over unclean spirits and to heal all manner of disease and all manner of sickness. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall Recover. Come out of there, you stinking demon. Hurry up. Come out faster. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out, you stinking pervert. Get out of his stomach. Come out of that stomach. Come out of that stomach, you pervert. Tonight is anti-pervert night. Every pervert demon has to go. There he goes. Every pervert demon has to go. Go quick. Come out of here, pervert. Arrogance and pride. I bind your power. Vanity, I curse you right now. I curse you, vanity and pride and arrogance. Religious pride, I curse you. Religious arrogance, I bind your power. Right now, Father God, I ask you, whoever needs to be broken, I ask you to break them. I ask you to break them. Every lazy person, I ask you to break them. Every casual believer, I ask you to shake them to the core. Time is short. The rapture is only a few years away. We're on borrowed time right now. It's time for you to be broken and to change. If you won't change, I'm going to ask God to break you and change you. I hate to pray that prayer. It's the last prayer I ever pray. I hate praying it. But I sense it tonight. I sense it on YouTube. There are people who are so lazy, they will not even fight for their own lives. They won't even fight for their own lives. Come on. 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 Come on.
Stop living in your pervert. Self hatred, go. Self hatred, come out. Get out, buddy. Go. Go now. Out of my feet. Out of my head. Get out of my head quickly. Hurry up. Come out of there, you pervert. Go. Come out. Every demon from every club. Every evil spirit from every pole. Come out of that body right now, you pervert pornography. Get out of there. Come out. Chronic masturbation. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. What are you doing in there? You stinking demons. You're, you're slowing up and relaxing. You don't relax. You come out quicker. Shut up and come out. Go. Hurry up. Evil. Come out of me right now. Evil. Evil. Demons from the Philippines. I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I said get out. What are you doing? Loafing. Come out of there. Loafing demons. Come out. Hurry up. Get out of her. Hurry up. Get out of her. Come out of him. Hurry up. Right now. Right now. Orthodox spirits. I curse you. Come out. Orthodox. Come out of that man. There they come. Orthodox church demons. Come out of that body. Come out. Legalism. Ritualism. Come out right now. Chronic masturbation. Go. Go. A lifetime of wickedness and sin. Go now. Leave now. Wickedness and evil. I want you out now. Come out right now. Out of her feet. Out of her womb. Come out of there. Go. Right now. There he is. Come out. Here he comes. Come out. Come out. Religious demon. Go. Come out. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Come out right now. Go. There it comes. Satan, lose your hold. Lose your... You're not stopping. Come out of there right now. Some of these demons are lazy tonight. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Quickly. Quickly. Quicker, I said. Quicker. I bind Roman Catholicism spirits. Mother Mary demons. Come out. Pope demons. Come out right now. Immaculate reception demons. Come out right this second. Go. Infallibility of the Pope. I bind your power. Come out right now. Spirit of lies. Spirit of wickedness. Spirit of religion. You. You come out in Jesus' holy name. Father, give this man of God the gift of hate for being deceived and lied to for over 20 years. Come out. Every one of those liars comes out tonight. Every stinking liar. Go. All of you. Go right now. All of you. Go now. Get out. Right now. Get out. Come out of there. Come out. Go. Come out from childhood to this moment. Come out from childhood. Go. Leave this man of God. Go. Get out of there. Childhood hatred. Come out. Childhood pain. Come out. Go. Go now. Heartaches and sorrows. Disappointments. Disappointments. Demons from his parents. Go. Come out right now. Get out of there, buddy. Come out. Hurry up. Come out of there. Right now. Come out. Come out of his spine. Come out of his spine. Catholic demons, come out. Go. Come out. Demons from priests, go. Priest demons, spirits, come out. Right now. Go right now. Go right now. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Right now. Go. Go right now. Go right now. What happened? I'm good. That was amazing. I know. What happened? Just everything. Everything that I was holding up to. What were you feeling? Pain. Oh. I was feeling so negative and unhappy and joyless. And now that I released all these demons that were attached to me. I feel relief. I feel 
joy of the Lord. I feel more clarity, and it is over joyful to this moment. Yeah. Yeah, like a gleam back. The gleam is back. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is better. That's my husband. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so what just happened? Um, I don't know. I was. I don't know. What to say. <laughs> so how did you feel when you came to the altar? Nervous, nervous, and shaky. Uh -huh. Yes. And so you were in pain, right? Yeah, in my neck, all the time, always pain in my neck. Mm -hmm. And so what got broken off of you today? Uh, fear. You get drunk. Amen. Amen. So the fear is gone. Yeah. And the pain is gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So praise God. <laughs> she said the fear is gone and the pain is gone. Hallelujah. All right. You're all done. God bless you. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. God is, oh, I'll take this. God is healing his people. He's setting the captives free. He's de delivering the oppressed. We just bless God. Streamers, if you're listening right now, I just invite you to put your hand where the pain is. And we're just going to believe by faith in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we declare and decree, God. We speak healing over the bodies and the minds of your people, God. We declare and decree that they're free in their minds in the name of Jesus. We break down the spirit of infirmity that has come against their bodies right now. We release the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the anointing that destroys the yokes of bondage. And we declare, God, in agreement that the captives are set free, that people are delivered, that people are healed right now. God is omnipresent. He's right there where you are. Just put your hand on the place that is affected and just declare right now, I speak life over you, that you will live and that you will not die. We cast down cancer in the name of Jesus. We speak to the root of it and we declare and decree that it will die right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fibromyalgia in the name of Jesus that is moving through the bodies you demonic spirit we grab you by the neck and we command you to come out come out of the, the muscles come out of the legs come out of the arms fibromyalgia I command you to submit to the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I speak to every infirmity under the sun you will be subject to the power of the Holy Ghost. I command you to be loosed right now in the name of Jesus. The fire of God is moving through your body right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The spirit of God is shifting that thing that's in your body, that thing that is affecting you, that thing that has compromised your destiny, that has affected your future, that has compromised your calling and Christ Jesus, uh, we declare and decree uh, that we stand in agreement uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, with the anointing of God, uh, with the fire uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, you cannot have God's people. You cannot continue to torment. Uh, we come against the spirit of torment uh, in the midnight hours. Uh, every night demon uh, that is moving in the lives of God's people, uh, we shine the, shine the light uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, on you uh, and you are now exposed uh, and I command you to be loosed uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I thank you God. I thank you God that we come against uh, every stronghold in the mind, every plano spirit in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree God that the mind 
chains of your people are set free right now in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of insanity. We bind every bipolar demon. We bind paranoid schizophrenics. We bind the spirit of anxiety. We bind every spirit of depression. We bind the spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus. We command you to be subject to the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We declare and we decree that you cannot have the minds of the people. We say there is no double mindedness in the body of Christ. We come against every two souled spirit that is operating in the minds of God's people and we cancel your assignment right now. 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 We command you to go and be loosed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew 18 that everything that we bind on earth will be bound in heaven and everything that we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Bible says that to agree anything we ask in your name it will be done. Wherever you are in the world and you are listening to this we declare in agreement that that thing will be broken off of you tonight and you will testify about the goodness of God and you will give him all the glory for what he has done. Ooh, rabasa. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we glorify your name, God. You are worthy to be praised, God. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be lifted up, God. We lift up your name, God. We send you praises, God. We magnify you. Oh, holy Jehovah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God that Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals the hearts of his people, he's moving through this place right now. If you would just grab a hold of a little bit of faith. The Bible says that if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, God said you could move a mountain. There's mountains in your lives that are trying to circumvent your destiny. But I declare and decree by the authority and the power of Jesus Christ that your faith is made whole right now uh, I declare mustard seed faith uh, mustard seed faith uh, is popping up uh, all around uh, under the sound uh, of my voice uh, mustard seed faith uh, is moving uh, in the hearts of God's people uh, mustard seed faith uh, that's all you need uh, you don't need a bucket uh, you don't need a truckload uh, all you need uh, is a tiny mustard seed uh, if you got a mustard seed uh, of faith. God said you can ask anything in his name and he would do it. He will do it. I come into agreement. I declare right now that your faith be made whole in the name of Jesus.